God, I hate the voice. Hello, welcome back to Iwai Hime. Let's just continue. Giant caterpillars had assembled to consume Princess Ellis's beautiful castle. Shreds of the car soldiers torn to pieces in battle were strewn everywhere. Kanai and the Set King were facing off at the giant set board in the courtyard. The Set King was at an overwhelming advantage, as though alluding to the tragic state of affairs. Kanai's pieces were devoured and shattered one after the next. Every time she gave up a part of her body to summon new ones. But the Set King destroyed them relentlessly, driving her body and spirit to the edge. <laughs> Nai unconsciously dropped what she was holding. It looked like a stuffed pincushion impaled by countless pins, but it wasn't. It was a doll that represented her wagered parts, body parts. She had to give up a part of her body to create new pieces every time she lost one. Normally, one would have to remove them manually via torturous methods as per the rules of Sek. But the Sek King had chosen not to do that. Instead of losing body parts, Kanai would offer them as collateral and give them to the Sek King. There's a fly. Really? Now? The stuffed pin cushion at her feet was signified what parts of her body now belonged to the Sek King. There were already pins everywhere, like a hedgehog. In other words, the Sekin already owned Kanai's whole body. Still, this wasn't a game in which she could afford to admit defeat. Her castle had already fallen, she had nowhere to run. Give up with to surrender her body and soul. Continuing to resist no matter the crisis was her only way left of protecting her heart. Oh, joy. The sucking handed her a heart pincushion. Kanai timidly reached for her sewing kit, stuffed with pins. As she stabbed it, she could keep fighting and change from part of her heart. She had no other choice, but to do so would be gradually accepting surrender each time. Her mind made up. Kanai took about ten pins and thrust them into the heart. Oh God, there wasn't supposed to be pain involved. It can I feel like she'd been literally stabbed in the heart. Grinned at her feet, felt mushy for a second. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, I thought, I thought I was losing, losing it. It is okay. So, visuals are yeah, yeah. Sticky drops of sweat rose to her face, despite her valiant defiance. Her bravery was faltering. <laughs> That was already true. She no longer had a home to go back to, nor a mother she could rely on. She'd known them, but that's why she'd say money so she could live on her own at any time. <笑>人間は家族で生きるのが幸せなのでちゅう。一人で生きるなんてできないのでちゅう。お前の暮らす目とはみんな親の愛に包まれて無垢抜くと暮らしているのに。どうしてお前だけが。Indeed, he didn't need to point out how unfair it was. Why was she the only one who had to suffer such injustice? 
all of her classmates got along with their parents living rent free in their homes. <laughs> they were fed, given an allowance, and didn't have to pay any of the bills. Why did she learn to start making a living entirely on her own, waiting through fields that just to survive? wasn't fair. Now I felt her knees as she rubbed her arms around her shoulders. She could no longer suppress the fear she felt as a child who had lost her only protection. Didn't she already technically? Who the hell would want to live in a kingdom of monsters? The King's forces were comprised of pieces twisted and hideous yet giant and powerful. They moved irrationally, exterminating Kanai's newborn pieces one after another. Those pieces born from the sacrificed parts of her heart shattered and vanished behind from the board. Kanai reached back into the swimming kit with trembling hands, pulled out more pins, and stabbed them into the heart. Each one symbolized her impending surrender. Every time her heart was forced to accept that a child couldn't possibly live on her own. All she wanted was an ordinary life, not wading through filth and prowling in search of a mess day after day like a rat. Not scraping by on hard time jobs and seating, seating herself on unhealthy food. If she drifted between hunger cafes and friends' houses, she'd eventually lose those too and have no choice but to live on the streets. Was that all her life was worth? Her classmates all lived snugly with parents who loved them, provided them with food and shelter. So why was she the only one forced to live in such a horrible state? Oh. home with a warm bed and enough money to lead a healthy life. Kanai thought only her mother could provide her with such luxuries, but there was someone else who would and he was right in front of her. No, don't. He said she'd be part of their family and her mother would be there too. Only a family could provide their children with money and shelter. Only a family could love so freely and unconditionally. The world revolved around money. That was the reason everyone had to work. Children were... Oh, fuck. Children were simply sheltered from that truth. <laughs> Sorry. And yet they would fight with their parents without a shred of gratitude. They had the gall to say they'd run away from home. No matter how sordid the parents, it was a blessing to have a roof over your head, a place to sleep, meals for free. This man was right. You know he love conquered all families were wonderful glory to families. Erisuhime, oh, no. Boxing 
もちろんエリス姫がどうしても嫌だというのなら断ってくれてもいいんでちゅただしこれだけは忘れないでほしいでちゅボクチンを断った後に。I just realized the dolls were back on the text box. Roto ni mayoi. Kami no ke bosa bosa no dobunezu mi mitai ni natta ato ni. Yappari watashi ga machi gatte mashita. Gomen na sai. Toka itte mo. Sono toki wa mo. God, I hate the voice. It's a good voice for the character, but God. <laughs> The second king, Choro, will triumph. But accepting suffer would mean surrendering his heart, or her heart. The filthy grin on that unpleasant man was looking more and more like an angel smile by the second. Oh, yes, a very much an angel smile.、Ugh. Surely it would be crazier for her to keep rejecting his patronage out of pride. He was her savior who imparted that lesson to her. The more she thought that way, the more appealing he seemed. <laughs> Don't give in, can I? That couldn't be right. Scum like him couldn't possibly be her savior, her prince. After all, the prince who would save her, who would grant her her happily rapture, was. Oh, the, oh, the doe here. Doe's here. Kanai's doppelganger with those divine antlers and scarlet eyes appeared from above and laughed. There's no way you killed him. あれの裾を食らえば我は姉上様たちの全てを進すだけで長様前に貴様という殻を破らねばならぬ我は昔三役の翼を存分に伸ばしてこの地に災いをもたらすのだ醜きをとこよその娘という殻を砕けうふふふふふ心を砕きすりつぶし虫けらの身分にまで落としてやるがいいそれでこそ小坂式すすだけの秘術の生贄の末裔にふさわしい末路よ かしこまっててございまっちゅうさあエルス姫どんどん行くでちゅうスズメが死んだなんてウソだウソだどうしたムツの末裔 逃げ回るばかりで戦わぬのか拍子抜けであるぞムツは神前武術なるものを生み出し五世に伝えたそうだがその拳神の呪いに通じるかどうかなぜ試さぬ The divine tribute sound was meant to be dedicated to a god, not for striking one. A j a c k a n show the, the fist to crush evil and demonstrate the righteous path. Chuzumu was up against the avatar of Rukugami Hiko no Mikoto's curse. In other words, he was up against the wrath of the god itself. It was akin to bringing the lightning from the heavens. There was no evil but righteousness in nature, the same applied to her, her existence. So punching her would prove ineffective. <laughs> お前を撃つためのものじゃない。ならば 
何のためにあるというのかハジャ検証邪悪を破りで正しきを示す That was demonstrated by showing thanks to you, God. Susumu understood that logic that was meant to be the essence of the divine tribute style. But how could he feel any grief, gratitude for this girl trying to kill him with such a twisted smile? That attack split both sky and ground, cleaving the whole room in half. The Zaw's relentless assault had already rendered to the room, no, the whole cabin asunder. No better take any more, the force split into two and began to tilt. <coughs> Susan was swallowed by the rift in the room. Below was the foliage of a thick grove of giant trees. The room was a treehouse that had been. Still on the top of a towering tree. Susan managed to grab onto the floorboard in the last second. The rest of his body hung in midair. He wondered just how tall this tree was. It felt like he was looking down at a forest from a cabin car in the mountains. Except for so slightly missing, just look at just looking at it froze Susan with fear. Hi. She placed the edge of the giant saw on Suzumu's fingertips. It seemed the avatar of the divine curse was unbound by laws of the human world like gravity. She floated in the air and calmly grazed down, gazed down at Suzumu. <laughs> だけど。それはお前の望みであって。彼女の望みじゃない。だから考える<笑> And that would be. この子に及んでどんな選択がある。何もない。貴様は今から我に捕らわれ、息切れを引きずり出されるのよ。それを拒否することだ。You can do. When she captured him, only death would him a literal dead end. And if he fell from the side, his death was also guaranteed, but thick foliage lay below. Though the chances of survival from John, it was still a chance, so Susan would not hesitate to choose. He's gonna let go. The manifestation of the curse reached out for me for him, but Susan had already vanished into the world below. Not even the sound of a maiden ground would reach that high up. <laughs> to be fair, how many times has he died in these hauntings? He's died plenty of times in the hauntings. お前の王子はコヌ。故に、お前に選べる選択肢はない。その男の 
醜き芋虫たちの家族に加わることのみ<笑>それを認めるまでにどの程度の時間がかかるかだけの違いしかないさあさあまたコマがなくなっちゃったでちゅよ<笑>そんなにちょっとずつコマを増やしてもやけ石に水でちゅもっとハートをドーンと開け渡さないと逆転は望めないでちゅよくくしないお前なんかに Nine grabbed a fistful of pins and thrust them into our heart, into the heart. It was impossible to even make out its original shape anymore. Nearly every part of it was covered in pins. She squeezed out every last bit of her heart to muster her final resistance. Several powerful pieces befitting that final flicker of the candle lined themselves up on the board. <laughs> k a n a i s white pieces advanced gallantly across the board. They stared down and clashed with the Set King's black pieces. But her pieces were defeated one after another. It was an unreasonable. The man was wicked and crafty. On top of that, he'd stolen assets from countless other victims. The depths of all those wicked acts were the well, for the well from which he drew his own pieces. His power was far beyond what a powerless, penniless child could possess. <laughs> ただただその恐怖を先送りにすることのみ。六つの末裔も、鈴の目の末裔も、ともに、もろい。<笑>これでまた、エリス姫の駒がなくなってしまったでしょうね。もうコマは出てこないでちゅかないなら、ボクチンの勝ちということになるでちゅよ。She had to keep creating pieces to avoid admitting defeat, but both the doll and heart pen cushions were already stuffed with pens. There was nowhere else for her to stick her pen into, so she couldn't create more pieces. k n a i had given up all her heart and body. All that was left was her emotions. She had no choice but to accept she'd lost. Koma ga mo dase nai nara. Bokuchin no kachi de chu ne. Mo kake rare ru karada wa nai de chu. Mi mo kokoro mo doku doku imo mushi na no de chu. k a n a i slowly felt her knees groveling and weeping. He was right, she had nothing left. k a k e r a r e k a r a d a w a k o k o n i a r Kanojo no Tamini. Kono Migu de Okakerio. Fuck it, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I know there's a quick save, but. I do a quick save there. だ、だれ貴様あの高さからどうしてここはおとぎの国だと君が言ったよ。ジュズムーは fallen from a tall tree。There was no way the foolish could break his fall. He'd been prepared to die. 
but resemblance of the same birds, butterflies, flowers, and mushrooms I caught them. This was Kanai Minofi's mental world. It would hardly sit back and let his prince die. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ようやく君に感謝できる理由ができた。何君のおかげで僕はここにあれる。ハジャ検証。それを示せること僕は心より君に感謝する。だと。人の分際で。なんという傲慢。やれ、見に来きおとこよ。身の目課題の最後の心。打ち砕いてしまえ。今さらこの状況でどう逆転するというのでちか。やってみるでちよ、若造が。下がってて。僕がやる。Suzumi lowered his hips and readied his fist to demonstrate his wager to the sucking his stuck, his stuck, stuck needles in his own right arm, the very embodiment of the Susha, Susahara divine tribute style. The radiant light shone in the air and a powerful white piece, pure and sublime as ivory, descended upon the board. It shimmered brilliantly and spouted thick antlers like the sacred deer befitting an opponent of the divine curse. So, it's the, so yeah, it is the original god against the four doe that, cur that never did the curse. Twisted black pieces charged the white piece all at once. Ugh. But they failed to take it. It was like they were striking a stone wall with eggs, no matter how much the grotesque pieces attacked, Susan's piece didn't even budge. Instead, they were destroyed themselves. <laughs> そして、なぜ勝てないのでしょうか。ここまで追い詰めるために、あらゆる努力を時間をお金を費やしてきたのに。その努力がどれほどのものというのか。おほほ。な、何？すすはらりゅう神前武術が。<笑> <おほほほ。笑> 今日まで積み重ねた長き年月悠久の千年の前にどの程度のものだというのかうふふ。Millennium of emotions all to save a single woman. I hear the music in the back. How could one piece of filth's trifling ambition stand a chance against that? Suzumu's merciless anger smashed the black pieces one after another, a veritable blade aimed at evil. That sight was positively divine to Kanai. It was the end of the line for all the evil that dared face Suzumu's wrath. All the hideous pieces were exterminated, eradicating the filth house all that remained. The divine curse swung her large saw down from the sky. 
but that blade could not cleave his most sublime piece. The saw was stuck in, in it and could not be pulled out. The divine curse frantically tried to remove it, but then Suzumu slowly rose to the board and made his way over to her. ここ who swung the lowered his hips and grated his fist. The divine curse was frozen in place and couldn't move. She just looked on, in panic anticipating her own end. Man gripping Kanai by the throat and trying to drag her down the filthy alley was shocked at Suzumu's sudden appearance. Suzumu! <laughs> A fist created to save a single woman crushed evil. Susan we drove his fist into the sloven slovenly man's abdomen. The man's stomach twisted like a whirlpool and he was sent flying as he coughed up a filthy spray. His large body crashed into the ground and rolled across the sidewalk, landing face up. <laughs> Suzumu's face expressed a desire to crush evil, an indignant expression that even the divine curse would have cowered before. Taking it back, the man crawled across the asphalt as he made a break for it. Now he felt like she was dreaming. The man who tried to take control of her entire life had been erased with one punch. Man, one punch man. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Suzumu. Can I smile with tears in her eyes? Well, he can't, yeah, he deserves it. <laughs> The filth moaned in agony as he staggered through the dark town. Just then, a woman appeared. Oh, hey. Hi, Ojisama. Konbawa. Hata. So, so, da. Kesatu. Kesatu, yon de gre. Na kozodi. Oba kiri. Puttobasarete. Inagata tapped her phone a few times and showed the screen to the man. It showed a photo of the man grabbing Kanai's shoulder with a vulgar smile. Ooh. No matter how you looked at it, it depicted a middle-aged man forcing a reluctant girl down an alley against her wishes. I'd say that's evidence of something that you could give to the police. 
No one who saw it would listen to any excuses he offered to the contrary. And on top of that, it was at his own tattoo parlor. He had a tattoo parlor. He owned it. Wow. He'd been done for... Maybe he'd be done for sure if he were caught trying to bring a miner in there. The man brought his hands together and begged, and suddenly he found himself hanging in midair. And they got to lift him up by the collar with his with unimaginable strength. Hinagata was smiling her eyes, hell the ferocity that would make anyone quake in their boots. She threw the man right into the hood of a parked car. Unable to comprehend what was happening, he fled into the city, spewing snot and tears. Hi! And the grinned impishly as she snapped a photo of them. A boy and a girl in the shopping district that night could have an illicit relationship no matter how he spun it. Ah, oh, it's good to have you like this again. あ。ちょうだいよ。間に合ったみたいね。はい。間に合ったかは。わからないけどね。みなべさん、今日が何日か知ってる?うん。And I took out her phone and showed her the date. It was a just it was a day earlier than Kanai thought. The other day when the filthy caterpillar had received his true colors revealed the true colors. It was all a nightmare. Oh, the date on her own phone was the same. I ran to a nearby convenience store and checked the date in the newspaper and anything else that displayed it. They were all the same. This really was the same night. <laughs> Nothing actually happened to her. It was, well, it was about to happen to her. And I got her just for her to roll up her shirt. So can I timidly did it. She was still burying her stomach. Eh? Oh, that disgusting caterpillar was nowhere to be found. Oh. Can I laugh feebly as she burst into tears? To think that that hell of a night really had just been a dream. I'm about to fucking, I'm about to fucking cry. That said, there was no way everything would be all wrapped up in a nice will. The cult leader her mother had been so engrossed with had up and vanished. She'd probably go restless at the thought she'd been abandoned again. There was still a chance for her next actions wouldn't be for her daughter's benefit. Though one danger had vanished, Kanai still had a rough journey ahead until she reached her happily ever after. But this time, she wanted to help her mother. Kanai felt she'd never seen eye to eye with her mother due to their poor relationship. But at the end of the day, her mother had never forgotten to pay for her food, nor had she ever denied her their home. Because no matter how poor their relationship was, they still they were still family. Princess Alice of the Arcanai Arcan Minova Kingdom was tough. 
Queen Bee was an adult, her choices were hers to make. But, but, but by putting distance between them and making her own choices as an adult, can I could focus on her own future? あ、最初は普通に盆倉な大学に行こうかなって思ってたんだけど。今頃になって、やっぱ進路考え直そうって思ってる。就職ですかそれとも専門学校ですか介護士でも目指そうかなって。おお。これからの高齢化時代、行く
Anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode of EY Hime. If you did, then subscribe, check out other stuff I've done. And yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.